word of introduction, and it just talks about the Mass, uh, sort of its sort of overall general history of the Mass. And if we understand what the Mass is, we would ne we'd always put it, uh, I'll say, first place, but we'd always look toward it and understand the importance of it, why we would want to attend Masses and receive, of course, receive Holy Communion as frequently, as often as possible. If you, ha if you have the, your St. Andrew Missal, the Mass of St. Isaac Jogues is on page uh, 1853. I don't know what it would be in the Father of Sons, but St. Andrew Missal is page 1853. The epistle appointed for today's Mass is taken with the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 11 through 15. I ought to have, brethren, I ought to have been commanded by you for I have no way to come short of them that are of measure apostles, although I be nothing. Yet the signs of my apostleship, apostleship have been wrought on you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is there that you have had less than the other churches, but that I myself had not burdensome to you? Pardon me this injury. Behold, now the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome unto you. For I seek not the things that are yours, but you. For neither ought the children to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. But I most gladly will spend and be spent myself for your souls. The, although, th although loving you more, I be loved less. The gospel appointed for today's Mass. Let's take from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 23. At that time, Jesus, coming down from the mouth of mountain stood in a plain place, and the company of the disciples and the very great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast, both of Tyre and Sidon, who were, who were come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the multitude sought to touch him, for virtue went out from him and healed all. And he lifted up his eyes on his, dis on his disciples, said, Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of, he of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Be glad in that day and rejoice, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. But I most gladly will spend and be spent myself for your souls, although loving you more, I be loved less. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Just as a little liturgical note, uh, we celebrate the Feast of St. Isaac Jogues and Companions. In Canada, we, they celebrate St. John Brebeuf and Companions in, Can in Canada. Uh, they, they switch the two names around, say, because St. Isaac Jogues died in the United States, in upstate New York, St. John Brebeuf died in Canada on the other side of the Canadian border where the Canadian border is located now. So in Canada, they would, the prayer we'd say at the collect or the oration, they would put St. John Brebeuf's name in there where we put St. Isaac Jogues. It's just a, it's just a little liturgical note. But I'd like to talk about mostly St. Isaac Jogues and his companions. They all were martyred, but St. Isaac Jogues himself was born in January of 1607, 1607, almost f well, over 400 years ago. In Orleans, France, he is ordained in 19, or 1636, at the age of 29. He died in 1646. He's only 39 years old. He died in Oursville, New York, and was canonized along with the other saints and all the North American martyrs in 1930. St. Isaac Jogues entered the Society of Jesus, he was a Jesuit, in 1624 as a young man. He was only about seven, 16, 17 years old. He was ordained in 1936, and he was assigned to Canada and spent his first six years among the Hurons in Canada and north uh, upstate New York. And he there instructed and aided the Indians, the Native Americans, during that period of time. In 1641, he began missions in Sault Ste. Marie, and the following year in 1642, 
St. Isaac Jogues and some of his fellow missionaries were attacked at one point in time. They were going to down to Quebec to pick up supplies. They were attacked by 70 Hir uh, Iroquois or Mohawks, uh, and they were captured, and they beat him and the other captives, they, about 70 other captives. They beat him with their fists, with clubs and sticks, until he himself was unconscious. What they did to the others is not recorded. But when he woke up, they bit, chewed on his fingernails and then chewed two of his fingers off, the, what they call the canonical fingers, the, pre, the fingers that the priests used to hold the host. They chewed on his canonical fingers on each of his hands until the bones were sticking out. They understood enough, they had enough instruction to understand that the priest needs his fingers, to his, what they call the canonical fingers, his forefinger and his thumb, to be able to, by church discipline, to be able to offer mass. Dur during that time, he was in captivity for 17 months. Saint Isaac Jogues uh, faced unspeakable tortures of one kind or another. Uh, it's recorded that uh, numerous times uh, that they beat him, they made him a slave, and they treated him worse than an animal. Throughout the winter, he had very little clothing, he froze, and all that with, with the hardships of, of the weather at that time. Uh, he still, at that point, even as a captive, carried out his missionary works, instructing those that would listen to him, and even in some cases baptizing them. He is recorded that he baptized close to 70 people while being captive among the Iroquois. And he even cared for the sick, and he even cared for one of the men that had, one, that one man that had chewed off, uh, chewed on his fingers. The, understand the, the Iroquois and the Hurons themselves. They were pagan, of course. They were savages. They were rough. They were impatient. Uh, they were thoroughly given over to every kind of impurity. They had their houses, and they all lived in a community house, as it were. And they had suffocating fires. The its, uh, odors were foul odors within the huts. It was certainly uncomfortable even breathing. Uh, they had their divinities, the sun, the moon, uh, the stars, whatever it may have been, among other material objects around them. They had sorcerers or witches that led, in wild, led the wild feasts and the orgies that they had to appease their pagan gods, their pagan spirits. And they had many savage superstitious beliefs. And aside from this, the, the North American martyrs, aside from dealing with their, the problem of the superstitions, there was sorcery, there was promiscuity, promiscuity uh, there was cannibalism, uh, and whenever there, were, uh, this, whenever there was some illness or disease, they attributed it to some subnatural, I won't say supernatural, but some uh, god of theirs that they offend them somehow or another, and they would have their curing ceremonies, what I read, and shamans practicing their sorcery upon the, the individuals. St. Isaac Joe, St. John Brebeuf were convinced of Satan's dominion over those poor souls, those Indians at that point in time. So if you understand what they were, how they believed, you can imagine when, the, when they tried converting them, they were coming up head up against the devils themselves because uh, he had a hold on them and he wasn't going to let go. The, when they were taken into captivity at the time when they chewed the fingers off, also they would lead them from village to village and make them run the gauntlet. Uh, and in doing that, they would file them through and they would beat them with rocks, with sticks, with clubs, and they, they would force them uh, to be raised upon some makeshift platform, and there they would be mocked as well by not only the men beating them, but, but the women and children. Uh, there, there was a, one of the captives that was captured with St. Isaac Jogues. She was forced to cut his uh, St. Isaac Jogues thumb off, thumbs off, both hands, or at least one hand, and at night they were uh, tied up, sp spread eagle, and then the children would throw burning coals 
upon their, uh, upon their bodies. They were kept that way for three years, or excuse me, three days. And then as eventually they were just, of course I said held captive, he was held captive, they were held captive for 17 years. Many of them were put to death. And St. Isaac Jogues would spend his time in captivity, hearing the confession of those who were in captivity with him and absolving the other prisoners of their sins. Eventually he was ransomed, he escaped <coughs> uh, near Albany, New York, <clears throat> and the Dutch, who were anti-Catholic, uh, nevertheless helped him escape. They took him down to present-day New York. He was probably the first priest to be in New York, in the New York City area, I suppose we could call it. And then he went back to France in 1643. He reached home, and they presumed him dead. He made it known that he wasn't. And put the Pope, I think it was Pope Urban, gave, <clears throat> gave him permission to offer Mass, even... With, without using his, his uh, canonical fingers. And uh, I think Pope Urban said that someone who's worthy of martyrdom is worthy of offering the blood of Christ who's going to shed his blood. And he went back to uh, New York and there a uh, short time later he was put to death. One of the, uh, one of the companions of St. Isaac Joe's was recorded at making this remark. <coughs> He said, whether we hope for the conversion of this country without shedding of blood, for the words of the ancient axiom is that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And these North American martyrs, they indeed were that. They shed their blood. <clears throat> and we then, of course, have reaped results of that. If we look at St. Isaac Jogues and St. John Brebeuf and the Companions, we could look at them, we could say, well, they went through all this work. They suffered all the suffering they did and they achieved nothing. The Iroquois did not convert. The Hurons, the Iroquois went on to uh, ambush or massacre many of the Hurons. Uh, and it almost as if what they did came to naught. Actually, if we jump ahead uh, 250 or 300 years, 200 years, uh, one of the Hurons who escaped the massacre by the Iroquois actually came out west with his family, he was an Indian chief, and that's actually recorded in, a, in our reg in a National, Catholic, uh, National Register in 1953. They tell him about how he came out here. He settled in with the Flathead Indians on the west side and there began instructing them in the Catholic faith, and then they sent a delegation, three delegations actually, eventually, down to St. Louis to acquire priests, and of course, Father G. Smith came up and continued the work of the evangel uh, evangelizing the Indians, filling in where this Indian Huron chief did not, uh, didn't instruct them all, he finished it up. So in a sense, our Catholic faith came to Montana from the St. Isaac Jogues, St. John Brebeuf in Canada, and because of their death, we had Catholicism brought to the United States, uh, into Montana in the mid 1800s. Uh, so we ourselves have a special interest uh, in these great martyrs who were canonized by Pope Pius, I think Pope Pius XI in 1930. So today is their feast day, we honor them. And let us pray to them that we have the same strength, the same faith, that we're willing to even shed our blood, that in so doing this, that the, the faith may spread. Uh, St. Saint, Saint John Brebeuf, the companion of St. Isaac Joes, made this remark. He said, he was speaking of the Hurons, and they're the ones that, of any of them that converted. He said, he says, speaking of them, he says, they know the beauty of the truth. They approve of it, he says, but they do not embrace it. Don't ever let that be said of ourselves. We know the truth, we approve of it, but let us embrace the truth, let us embrace the Catholic faith. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you.